Hey everybody, welcome back to Stoke. In the last video we talked about some of the equipment and the overview of how we make an extended range shot and how I like to do it. Um, you know, and we're talking that, that shot beyond your zero or your max point blank range. Um, so in this one we're gonna get into a little bit more detail about the sequence that I use that I found works for me about how you take that shot, um, whether you're just out having fun, shooting steel, shooting rocks, shooting sage bushes, whatever it is. Um, or you know you're trying to ethically harvest that animal. Um, so we'll just go through my sequence and uh, the equipment I use and, and what works for me. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here, we're going to talk about you know gathering the atmospherics and that initial um, that initial calculation of determining the vertical correction, and getting an initial wind estimate. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just say that we're here at this arrow and we're shooting at this wonderful depiction of a target down here you know whatever it may be rocks steel sagebrush um, animals if you're comfortable doing that um, so what we're gonna do first is we're essentially gonna pull out the kestrel and our ballistic calculator and so on the kestrel and you know whatever ballistic calculator you're using um, you know just input this these datas and then um, you can get most of this even from a weather app depending if you have cell service and where you are so we're just going to look at temperature um, relative humidity which is the water droplet so inside my kitchen you know it's 65 degrees and then 35 uh, percent humidity you know the barometric pressure here is 22.19 inches of mercury and right now we're sitting at 7,200 feet of elevation. Um, so I'm just gonna take this data and I'm gonna put it directly into the current weather portion of the ballistic calculator I'm using. The other piece that I wanna talk about is while we're gathering this data is I'm gonna do an initial wind reading. And you know, at this point, you know, I don't know exactly what the wind is. I can't predict it, I can measure it at my firing location, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the wind here is going to be the same as the wind at the target or even the wind in between. So what I want to do is I just want to get a general perspective here. So what I do is I estimate it to the nearest 10 mile an hour. So if it's, you know, calm-ish, I'm going to go ahead and calculate 10. If I can see, you know, sagebrush moving and grass moving, um, and there might be a little bit of dust in the air, you know, I'm going to calculate 20. And then um, if it's just gale force whatever, and the sage is blowing around, and there's dust all over the place, and the birds aren't even flying because they don't want to be up in the air, I'm going to calculate 30. So it's just a rough estimate at this point. And then we'll refine later, but for calculation purposes, we want to have that number in our head um, before we ever get on the gun. Okay, so now we're going to get into one of the more important parts of uh, actually getting that first shot or that first round hit, and that's ranging your target. You know, I've already got, I've identified my target. You know, I know it's safe. I know it has a safe backdrop behind it. Um, I've collected my weather data, so my barometer or my pressure information, my, that stuff that we talked about in the last video that essentially outputs air density um, and dictates the term of flight. And then um, you have taken your initial gross wind reading, so to the nearest 10 mile an hour. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and range it. You know, we talked about using the SIG Kilo 2000 last time. Um, this is the one I prefer to use, um, but how you use it is also very important. When I am shooting at stuff at an extended range, it's generally not super large. So you may be shooting at an 18 to 24 inch target, but over 500 yards, you're gonna have a hard time like ranging that individual target. So what I'm gonna do with this range finder is I'm actually gonna scan through it and I might do this a couple times. So I'm gonna depress the button and hold it so it actuates. And I might start here before the target and then I'm gonna scan my way all the way through to the end. And so what I'm doing is I'm essentially identifying if this is 825 yards when I start, and then about the time that my reticle passes over the target, I'm at 850 yards, and then I'm 875 yards once I come off of 
the button or, or release it from actu actively ranging, this validates for me that yes, okay, if I point range this, I'd get an 850-ish number. But essentially by scanning through it and using major terrain features around the target itself, by starting at 825, going through 850, and getting to 875, I can essentially say I can either take the 850 or I can average these two out and it just gives me a higher level confidence that that range is correct. Therefore, when I calculate it, the time of flight from the point that the bullet leaves the barrel to the point that it reaches the target is actually that distance and I do have a valid range rather than ranging short which would result in a low miss or ranging far which would result in a high miss on an 850 yard target. The final piece that I want to talk to you guys about is uh, actually using that data that you've collected using your ballistic calculator applying that data to your rifle and then uh, making that shot. So we've got this, all this um, weather data put into our app. Um, again, I use Ballistic AE. And uh, we have a gross wind estimate put in there as well, estimated to the nearest 10 mile an hour. Um, from there, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, you know, on this notional target that we're shooting, we're saying it's 850 yards. So my calculator is telling me that 850 yards is 13.69 minutes of elevation. So this scope is graduated in quarters of minutes of angle. So I'm gonna dial it to 13 and three quarters minutes of angle up from zero. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the, grab the wind number off of this as well. And so I'm just gonna keep this in my head. I'm not actually gonna do anything just yet with it. So this is telling me 1.2 minutes of angle um, into the wind. So if I have a left to right wind, then obviously I'm gonna push left into the wind so the bullet drifts right onto the target. So I'm gonna keep that number in my head. At this point, you know, I'm on my shooting mat, which for those of you with significant others that are into yoga, yoga mats make great shooting mats. Um, I have my rear rest. Um, that is supporting the rear of the rifle. I'm gonna go ahead and load the rifle at this point if I were doing this live for the notional target in my living room. We're obviously not gonna put bullets in there, but run the bolt forward, ensure that it's on safe, get behind the rifle. And at this point, I'm gonna observe through my optic what the wind is actually doing. So estimating on dust, grass, flags, whatever you've got out there that can give you that estimation, whether you have a full value wind that's that actual speed at 90 degrees, or whether you have a half value or a three quarter value or whatever it is. So if I see by looking through here that I have a five mile an hour wind, I'm gonna divide that number by two. So 1.2 divided by two is 0.6. I would hold 0.6 MOA into the wind and then make the shot from there. Or if it were a 10 mile an hour wind and it were at a 45 degree angle, I would again divide by two. Um, and that would give me that 0.6 hold off and shoot. So at this point, you know, you apply the fundamentals of marksmanship that work for you. So constant, constant breath hold on um, your trigger squeeze, ensuring that, that the pressure is appropriate on the rear buttstock and the bipod. Um, and uh, hopefully you got a good spotter with you or you can spot for yourself and, uh, and we're getting a bunch of first round hits. So that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.